Hello there and welcome back to the Aqua Open Source YouTube channel. My name is Anais Urlechs. I'm the Open Source Developer Advocate here in Aqua Security. Now in this video, I'm going to show you how you can install Tracy through the Helm installation. Tracy is a security runtime and forensic tool that uses eBPF to track the activities, the different events within the nodes of your Kubernetes cluster. This is the first video of a series on Tracy. First, we're going to see how we can install Tracy within our cluster, how we can access different logs from Tracy. And then we're going to see in the next video how we can configure the events that Tracy is going to track within our Kubernetes cluster, as well as covering more advanced topics. All of the videos within this series will have a blog post accompanying the video. Now the blog post can be found on my own blog, on my personal blog, and the link is below in the description of this video. So do check that out. Also, if you have any questions throughout this video or afterwards using Tracy, either join our Slack community. The link is also below in the description. Post a question in the discussion on GitHub or post a comment within the comment section of this video. We would love to hear from you and hear your feedback and thoughts about Tracy, as well as any questions you might have that allow us to improve the user experience of Tracy. Let's get started. Now, Tracy is part of the Aqua Security GitHub organization. You can find the repository here on Tracy. It contains all of the content, including the documentation and the different ways to deploy Tracy as well. Now, if you scroll down to the read me you can find the documentation the link to the documentation here now at the beginning you will see the getting started section including the different installation options we're going to follow the kubernetes quick start which showcases how you install tracy using helm to follow this tutorial please make sure that you have access to a running kubernetes cluster in my case, I'm using an Azure Kubernetes service, a two node Kubernetes cluster. Also make sure that you have Helm installed locally in your terminal. There are two different ways on how you can use the Helm chart. Either you can add the Aqua Helm chart repository to your list of Helm repositories and then install the Helm chart through there, or you can clone the GitHub repository right here. So clone this and then Within here, we have a deploy directory. Within the deploy directory, we have our Helm installation and the Tracy Helm chart. This is also where you would find the values YAML manifest if you want to overwrite the default values of the Helm chart installation. You could do this through overwriting the values in the values YAML manifest within the Tracy Helm chart. So you could also install the Helm chart directly through the GitHub repository. Now, if you want to have the Helm chart easy to manage and better versioned uh, <laughs> through the Helm registry uh, related to our latest releases, then we would highly suggest you that you actually use the Aqua Helm chart repository. Now we're going to copy this command to add the Helm, the Aqua Helm repository to our Helm repository list. And then we say Helm repo update and we update and pull all of the latest changes from the Helm registries. Now that this is done, we can actually install the Tracy Helm chart. Now this command is going to install Tracy from the Aqua Helm chart repository in the Tracy system namespace. And it's going to actually create the system Tracy system namespace upon installation. So we can copy this command and just install Tracy inside of our Kubernetes cluster. Now this installation is usually fairly quick. Once it's installed, make sure that all of the pods um, for Tracy are actually running within the Tracy system namespace. Now, as you can see, Tracy is actually a daemon set. It's installed as a daemon set. That means that on every node within your cluster, a pod should be running for Tracy. This will make it possible to tr for Tracy to track any activity on the different nodes within your cluster, because if a container would execute some processes on a node where Tracy is not running, Tracy wouldn't be able to attack it. So make sure that Tracy is at all times running on each node of your Kubernetes cluster. Now, once this is done, you can actually query the specific uh, logs from one of the pods, kubectl logs in namespace tracy system. So the name of the pod is basically just the name of one of the pods. You can choose whichever you prefer at this point. As you can see, there are just two warnings. Now these warnings are currently happening if I install tracy on, for example, um, Azure. And we can also query the different pod 
and it's the same thing here. Now, Tracy will track any activity that I have within the cluster that's happening. How does Tracy know which activity to track? Once you install Tracy, it will install a config map with the Tracy policies. Tracy policies define which events Tracy is supposed to track within your cluster. By default, Tracy is installed with hundreds of different events that, well, it's not installed with hundreds of different events, but you can track hundreds of different events, including system calls, advanced signatures, and other default events within your Kubernetes cluster. Now, these are the default events that Tracy will track with the installed policies upon installation. And here's also an example on how you can define Tracy policies. Now, we're going to look at Tracy policies in more detail in the next video. So how can we actually trigger any activity within Tracy? Well, I have here a debug pod YAML manifest. It's a very simple YAML manifest that basically installs a debug container image with strace installed. Now, strace is a diagnostic and debugging tool for Linux that basically monitors and can intercept with any system calls within the Linux kernel. I'm going to go ahead and install this pod inside of my container kubectl apply file uh, debug and I'm just going to install into the fault namespace. Now I can SSH into that pod. So with KNNS, I'm just going to press S and I'm inside of a shell within the pod. And then I can say S trace LS. And once I do that, right, Tracy is going to log that activity. And here is that activity now recorded. Now, as you can see, I created the first pod first and then the other pod running within my cluster because depending on which uh, node that container image runs on, one of the Tracy pods versus the other will record it. So I can see that activity recorded in the second Tracy pod that I query the logs of. I could also just generically query the logs from the entire daemon set and see that activity recorded as well. As you can see, there's already with just a few moments, within just a few moments, lots of activity recorded within Tracy, within the logs. Now, depending on how many events you actually query or actually record through Tracy within your node and how many different containers and other resources are running within your Kubernetes cluster, the number of logs that Tracy will record will get a lot bigger, right? So, you could use a log management tool such as Loki by Grafana or other tools to actually query specific logs. You could also uh, filter logs differently. So for example, I could just filter everything that's related to S trace. Now in this case, I again see everything, right? So you could also filter specific for specific events. So for example, for specific system calls and other events in the logs. Now, in this case, I only have S trace related events because that's the activity that happened within the cluster. Um, so I'm going to filter for those uh, first. But uh, depending on which kind of system calls and other events you want to track, you can filter for those as well. And we're going to look in the next video on how you can configure Tracy policies to track specific events from your container <coughs> images in your cluster. As always, it would mean a lot to myself as well as to all of the contributors who make Tracy possible if you could give us a star on GitHub on the Tracy GitHub repository. The link is down below in the description. Also, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for upcoming videos to make sure that other people see our content as well. If you have any ideas for future videos, any content that you would like to see next, please do also let us know either on the Slack community or down below in the comment section of this video. I hope to see one of our next videos on Tracy or Trivi or related content to our open source projects. Have an amazing day. Bye bye.